God. All glory be to the Father. All glory be to God. So. Excuse me. All glory be to God. We about to praise the Lord right now. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Lord God, I ask that you give light, give truth, give sight, and let everyone receive this message in its most purest form. Give me the strength to speak these words clear, to glorify your name. Thank you, Father. So, these dudes are telling you that they got, um, let me see what I can find. Hold on. So, we started off with this. Came a long way from meditating on the lawn. I don't know if y'all heard him. He said he came a long way from meditating on the lawn. So this is the same brother when I caught him on Instagram live one day. He don't know me, but I caught him on Instagram live one day. He said, yeah, Ak, you know, I'm um, grounding right now. So when they say they meditating on the lawn, stuff like that, when they rap like that, that's what they be trying to talk about, saying that they didn't learn none of that stuff from the Bible, brothers and sisters. To go take your socks off and go stand out in the ground. And that's meditating. That's grounding. The Bible don't talk about grounding. That's mixing new age teachings with the Bible. But let's continue. It's just one, it's one verse that he's saying here that I want to take this and I want to show y'all what this dude is talking about. It's in the law. If y'all was keeping the law, why are you getting your face trimmed up? So watch this. I'm just going to play one part because I don't want to deal with the copyrights and stuff like that. Listen. When the women tempt me, they said, let's lie like they spelling Leslie. I grew my hair and the demons left me. Numbers 1538. I'm wearing fringes that I got from Etsy. So you heard it, right? He said numbers 1538. He said he, he wearing fringes that he got from Esti. Did the Hebrew Israelites buy their fringes from unbelievers? That's all I'm saying. That's first of all. You buying them things from Chinese people. Numbers 1538. Who owned Esti? It says, speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue so and it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the lord and do them and that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes after which ye used to go a whoring so they telling them this Moses and the Lord spake unto Moses saying this. So they had to wear fringes with borders and a ribbon of blue. So it was. Can't I can't show you a picture, but you can go look it up and see. So. This is what he's talking about when he said I'm with numbers 1538. This is in the law. We're not under the law. We say by grace. So anybody talking that they will have to keep all the law.
or you just t you just take certain parts out the law and keep certain parts. No, you got to continue in all the law. I don't keep none of the law. I keep Jesus commandments, the law of Christ. And I have a vow. A Nazarite, a Nazarite vow. Number six. So. Watch this. We about to prove that. Jesus Christ never told the Gentiles to wear fringes, nor do we see him wearing fringes, only a garment. It said they touched the border of the hem of his garment. It don't say he had fringes on like how it said Numbers 15 and 38. It said they touched the hem of they touched the hem of his garment. You see people wearing coats and stuff like that in the scriptures. We're going to show and prove everything. So Jesus Christ never told the Gentiles to wear fringes, nor do we see him wearing fringes. Only a garment. We also wearing fringes or a garment is not spiritual, but fleshly. Jew, they, they look, they when they got told to wear these garments, it wasn't nothing that was going to take away their sins or nothing like that. Because it shows you, it says, it says, and it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. And that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, after which ye used to go a whoring. So they used to be having these garment, uh, or if they had them on before or not, they used to go whoring. So this garment ain't make them holy or righteous or get them into heaven. So. That's Numbers 1538. So a garment is not spiritual, but it is fleshly. Let's go into Jude chapter one, verse 23. Them, them garments that y'all be wearing, they are fleshly. They ain't spiritual. Watch we go into Jude. Right, let me see. Hold on. Going to Jude chapter one, verse 23. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, even hate, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Huh? Y'all telling me these garments is not flesh? See, I'm going to show and prove everything I'm talking about today. All glory be to God. I ain't come to be weak. We come and starting off strong. You see what I just say to y'all, brothers and sisters. Let me fix this camera so y'all could get um, a better, clear view of this, because I want y'all to see me real clear, because what I'm about to say is going to shake the whole Hebrew Israelite community to pieces. We're going to tear down all them lies y'all been telling throughout the years, all this Freemasonic teachings y'all grandfather's been passing y'all down. I rebuke it all in Jesus' name. Watch this, y'all. Let's go to work. It says, what I said was, I, I had said, the garments that they wearing is not spiritual, but fleshly. Let's go into Jude. So you wearing all these fringes in these garments ain't going to get you into heaven. It's not going to... Um, give you the holy spirit or anything so but the garment is not spiritual but fleshly we read that in jude chapter 1 verse 23 it says and others save with fear pulling them out of the fire hating even the garment spotted by the flesh it ain't say by the spirit the garment spotted by the flesh keep on playing it never told us if christ jesus the god the God of the Jews, you know, Jesus Christ is the God of the Jews, right? So it never told us if Christ Jesus, the God of the Jews, had a woolen or a linen garment. Let's go on to Leviticus 13 and 47. A lot of people think Jesus wore garment, I mean, fringes, because he had to keep the law and all that. And he fulfilled the law. He ain't say he wore fringes. And I'm going to show and prove everything I'm talking about. 
Leviticus 13 and 47. The garment also that the plague of leprosy is in, whether it be a woolen garment or a linen garment. See, it just said they touched the border of him and his garment and she was made whole. The lady with the issue of blood for 12 years. It don't say whether it was woolen or linen. See, he could have did whatever he wanted to. Whether it be in the warp or woof or of linen or of woolen, whether in a skin or in anything made of skin. Now, this is telling you that it had to be showed to the priest. Now, we already know we don't keep this Lord Jesus Christ, the high priest. And it says he shall I'll read it all to you. It says whether it be in the warp or woof or of linen or of woolen, whether in a skin or in anything made of skin. And if the plague be greenish or reddish in the garment or in the skin, either in the warp or in the woof or in anything of skin, it is a plague of leprosy and shall be shewed unto the priest and the priest shall look upon the plague and shut up if and shut up it that hate the plague seven days. So, and then you go in Leviticus chapter 13 and verse 52, it says, and he shall therefore burn that garment, whether warp or woof, in woolen or in linen, or anything of skin, wherein the plague is, for it is threatened leprosy, it shall be burnt in the fire. So, they had all these rules for these garments and stuff like that. They ain't teaching you the right way because they only got this stuff passed down from their Freemasonic grandfathers. Let's go on to Luke chapter 8, verse 44. Luke chapter 8, verse 44. Came by him and immediately touched the border of his garment and immediately her issue of blood stanched and jesus said who touched me when all denied peter and they that were with him said master the multitude thronged thee and pressed thee and sayest thou who touched me so did they ain't say he had fringes or anything on his garment so where y'all get this stuff from y'all act like jesus had to wear fringes and he had a blue garment. It never said nothing like that. It says, and a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which has spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment and immediately her issue of blood stanched. So it say touched the border of his garment. That don't mean he had fringes on. It don't tell us. You don't believe that? Let's go into... Let's go into Matthew 9 and 16. Go to Matthew 9 and 16. I got all scriptures to prove what I'm saying. Matthew 9 and 16. I start at verse 14. Then came to him the disciples of John saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast off, but thy disciples fast not? And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they fast. No man putteth a piece of new cloth unto an old garment. See, he's telling you right here. Why would they do stuff putting all this new cloth on an old garment? That stuff is old in the law, the Old Testament. Jesus saying no man putteth a new cloth on an old garment. It say... For that which is put for that which is put in to fill it up, take it from the garment and the rent is made worse. And then he tells you about new um, wine and bottles. So why would they put Jesus Christ coming wearing the same garments as the Old Testament? And he's a whole new testament. He's a new covenant. He's the new cloth. Right. He did things that none of them did by freeing them from that law of sin and putting them in the law of Christ. See? They was wearing fringes but had to go to the um, temple and do sacrifice for their own offerings.
Jesus ain't never had to do nothing like that. He just healed people. See, Matthew, we learned Matthew 9. So Matthew 9 and 16, I'll take y'all back to the beginning of creations. I want to make this real good. Let's go to Genesis 39 and 12. Let's make this real good because they got a lot of doubt. Genesis 39 and 12. I want to put all the Hebrew Israelite camps to bed after this video drop in Jesus Christ's name. Because this is to bring the body of Christ more strength and make us all one. If y'all believe in Christ, you're going to believe in these teachings. Don't try to twist this and make it believe what it don't say. Genesis 39 and 12. It say, I start at verse 10. And it came to pass as she spake to Joseph day by day that he hearkened not unto her to lay by her or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business and there was none of the men of the house there within and she caught him by his garment saying lie with me and he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out so and it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth it don't tell us that he had the garment he didn't wear a blue garment because this is in Genesis so them garments that y'all think is the real ones or that think y'all got to wear, that was just at a particular time. Because I'm going to show and prove to y'all it was more than one color garment. Stay here. We're going to learn a lot. You thinking it got to be blue ribbons. I'm going to show you there's more than different type of garments. And they don't teach all this stuff. i never seen it. But we went from Genesis on y'all. So we learned that this this joseph was tempted and this woman his his master's wife she was trying to lie with him and he knew that that was wrong so she she took his garment she caught him by his garment telling him to lie with her he left his garment in her hand so and fled and got out so it don't tell you it was a blue it, it, it this was before leviticus this was before deuteronomy so it wasn't told to them to wear a certain color garment how to wear the fringes or nothing so this obviously wasn't fringes it was a garment the same way how they touched the border of jesus garment this is i'm thinking that jesus had the same garment that joseph had on he always talked about the beginning. He always mentioned Adam and Eve. If from the beginning it wasn't like this, for, but because the hardness of your heart, Moses wrote, told you to suffered you to write a letter of divorcement. He mentioned Adam and Eve. He said, "I'm the beginning and the ending, Alpha and Omega." So that's Genesis 39 and 16. Let's go into. No, that's Genesis 39 and 12. Excuse me, I'm moving too fast. Let's go to Job 13 and 28. Job 13 and 28. I came to bring the sword. Job 13 and 28. Job 13 and 28. Came to bring the sword. And he, as a rotten thing, consumeth as a garment that is moth eaten. See? So it say, they talk about the moth eating, and they say, this, this, this dude right here was speaking to God, Job, and explaining that. This is what he was feeling and going through about sin and stuff like that. So that's just speaking about a garment in a different way. Spiritual. So Psalms 69 and 11. Psalms 69 and 11 say.
I made sackcloth also my garment. So how you going to say put fringes on and it got to be a blue border and all this stuff? What did David say? A Psalm of David, Psalm 69, verse 11. I made sackcloth my also my garment and I became a proverb to them. So here you have King David telling you he made sackcloth his garment. Psalm 69 and 11. Now we go to Deuteronomy 22 and 11. Deuteronomy 22 and 11. Deuteronomy 22 and 11. Y'all join these Hebrew Israelite camps and they had a bunch of sororities and fraternities. So they told you how to dress a certain way. Remember when the fraternities, they wear certain colors and stuff. They got certain symbols and stuff. So it means certain things. And that's all they do. And take Bible um, stuff from the Bible and it represents their sorority. I'm not deceived. I'm not bowing down to y'all wicked, evil, demonic doctrines that y'all pushing, trying to deceive the body of Christ. Deuteronomy 22 and 11. Thou shalt not wear a garment of diverse sorts as of woolen and linen together. Thou shalt make three fringes upon the four quarters of thy vesture wherewith thou coverest thyself. Um, so. This say don't wear wool and linen together. And they shall make three fringes upon the four quarters of the vesture so when we seen the pharisees they started enlarging the borders of their garments they start wearing the um making it all big and like looking like big old jackets and stuff like that right and they wanted to overdo it so when we see these things y'all not gonna sit here and tell me that this is in the law because it, sh it sits up and tell you various laws when you're going to Deuteronomy 22 and 11. So this is in the law. And if you keep in these laws, you got to keep all the laws. And I'm showing y'all, y'all don't keep all the laws. And Jesus didn't keep these laws. So why are you teaching it? Let's go into Matthew chapter 9 and verse 21. They going to call me every name under the sun set for a child of God because I'm exposing the devil that's deceiving y'all and hiding up in the church, making y'all think this is Christ like. Like them people that be wearing crosses and stuff like that. Man. Matthew chapter 9 verse 21. For she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. See? It say, and behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. So, you see how he was just able to just tell people, like, Your faith made you whole. All she wanted to do was touch the border of his garment. And this was the ruler's daughter right here. It says that the ruler came and worshipped him. I thought God alone was only supposed to be worship. Watch this. Go on to Matthew chapter 9 and start at verse 18. While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him saying my daughter is even now dead but come and lay thy hand upon her and she shall live and jesus arose and followed him and so did his disciples and behold a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment for she said within herself if i may but touch his garment i shall be whole huh if i may but touch his garment i shall be whole so that's Matthew chapter 9 and verse 21. Thank you, Lord. Now, let's go into Mark 5 and 27. I ain't come to play no games. Mark chapter 5 and verse 27. I came to swing the sword. 
when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. So. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? He didn't say who touched my fringes. Did he, brothers and sisters? It don't say that. Why your heart keep devising wicked imaginations trying to make you feel that my God saying and doing things that he didn't do? He said, who touched who touched my clothes? He didn't say who touched the fringes. See. If it was fringes, he would have said it. Because look, we went to Mark. Five and twenty seven. Now watch this. Mark 13 and 16. Mark 13 and 16. Mark 13 and 16. Mark 13 and 16. It's only going to get better, brothers and sisters. You're going to be blessed. If you watch the end of this whole video, you are going to be so relieved from all of them lies they've been telling. Mark 13 and 16. Let's go. It's a, and let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment. So y'all keep making it look like you got to have a garment and all this. It said, let, let and let him that is in the field not turn back again to take for to take up his garment. That mean leave it there, brothers and sisters. Y'all can't stop this. This is Holy Ghost inspired. It said, Mark. Chapter 13, verse 15, I sold my soul to Holy Ghost records, Jesus Christ being the master um, record label owner. Mark chapter 13, verse 15. And let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house. So th what is this talking about? About um, the signs of end of times. It tells you the wars and rumors of wars in Mark chapter 13. And then it says, brother shall betray brother. And then it talks about the days of affliction. So it tells you. But when. Ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing where it ought not. Let him that readeth understand. And let then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. And let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter therein to take anything out of his house. And let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment. So if you're in the field, it tells you not even to turn back again to take up your garment. So if it's in the law that they got to keep this stuff, they would have said, man, die with your garment on. Jesus wrote this stuff. This is his words, not mine. You cannot change them. I don't care what nobody say. The truth is the truth. Y'all are liars. Stop lying to your wives and your children. Y'all are deceiving your own selves and deceiving others. I ain't going to play no games. That was Mark 13 and 16. Y'all go read it. It said, and let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment. So I want to also go to Mark 10 and 50. And he casting away his garment rose and came to Jesus. See? He cast away his garment when he healed Barth, Barth, the Bartimaeus. Yeah, it says, and Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. See? So, and what happened after that? And Jesus answered and said unto him, what will thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. So he always said, thy faith made thee whole. He didn't say because you've been righteous and following this. And men, these are sinners. Some of these people born blind. And stuff like that. He didn't say, man, you dirty and 
you, 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 you begging. I'm not about to help you. He came to everybody and healed them. So that's when y'all come over here with that spirit, you getting cast out the temple. That's not the spirit of Christ. That's antichrist. Come back when your heart is right with God. You can't buy the Holy Ghost. Your money perish with thee. Genesis chapter 39, verse 16. Most thing y'all can do is study what I'm doing. Go back and try to teach my teachings. Genesis 39 and 16. All glory be to God. It's not my teachings. It's what God revealed and put in my heart. Genesis 39 and 16. And she laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home. And she spake unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant which thou hast brought unto us came in unto me to mock unto me to mock me and it came to pass as i lifted up my voice and cried that he left his garment with me and fled out so this was joseph accused of wrongdoing it didn't say nothing about how his garment had fringes right it didn't say that because this is in genesis and it wasn't even written yet so How can you say what's right and wrong when you would that if you said that this is the right way how to wear a, a fringe and a garment, you would say this is wrong in here. It, 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 these garments ain't had no fringes in Genesis. You can't say they had it. We don't see it in there. See, I'm putting y'all in a bad predicament. I'm one of the best teachers. All glory be to God. Let's go on to Job 30 and 18. This is going to be so wonderful. Job 30 and 18. Because I, I, my heart is on this. Job 30, 18. I wrote down all these scriptures. This is organic right here from scratch. Job 30 and 18. By the great force of my disease is my garment changed. It bindeth me about as the collar of my coat. What? So he talked about a garment and then the collar of his coat. I thought they only had to wear fringes, according to y'all. They wore coats too, brothers and sisters. That's what I'm showing you. It say, in Job, it say, by the Job chapter 30, verses 28. I mean, verse 18, excuse me. Job chapter 30, verse 18. By the great force of my disease is my garment changed. It bindeth me about as the collar of my coat. So he told you that they wore coats. So everybody didn't go out wearing them fringes. Even if they did, they were sinning in them. They was going to the Passover and was doing extortions and stuff like that. Sitting up in the Passover, acting like they was holy. That's why I, what Jesus said, y'all up in the temple selling turtle doves. What are y'all doing? Job 30 and 18. First Kings 11 and 30. That's why they say, I'm going to tell on everybody. Yeah, because y'all going up in them congregations doing orgies or something. Y'all don't want me to know the truth because I'm going to tell everything. Let me find out. First Kings 11 and 30, y'all. Let's learn more about these fringes in these garments to show and prove that these dudes don't know what they're talking about. First Kings 11 and 30. First Kings 11 and 30. And the hydra caught the new garment that was on him and rent it in 12 pieces. So this talks about a new garment that was on one of the prophets. 
And it came to pass at that time when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem that the prophet Ahijah, the Shilonite, found him in the way. And he had clad himself with a new garment. And they were, and they too were alone in the field. So this Shiloh knight had a new garment and, and they caught the new garment that was on him and rent it in two pieces. It says, and he said to Jeroboam, take thee 10 pieces for thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon and will give 10 tribes to thee. But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. Because that they have forsaken me and have worshipped Ash Torith. So when they telling y'all to worship Th Thoth, that's Ash Tor. They just take the name and switch it up. Ash Torith, that's Thoth, the goddess of the Zidonians, Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, and Milcom, the god of the children of Ammon or Ammon, and have not walked in my ways to do that which is right in mine eyes and to keep my statutes and my judgments as did David his father. So that's more history. We will not give you history. We're showing you the history of these garments. But it said he had a new garment. And this is in First Kings. So it can't be the garment that they was wearing with the fringes and all that stuff. Or maybe it was just a new garment that he had. You know what I'm saying? It could be that. But let's go on to Psalms 109 and 19. Psalms 109 and 19. They're talking about, you need to study more. Man, y'all need to stand off the street corners and stop preaching. What you talking about? Psalms 109 and 19. Let it be unto him as the garment which covereth him and for a girdle wherewith he is girded continually. So what about the girdles? I don't see y'all with a girdle because it don't say that, right? But it's in, in, in Psalms 109. It say, as he... I'm going to start at 109 and verse 18. As he clothed himself with cursing, like as with his garment, so let it come into his bowels like water and like oil into his bones. Let it be unto him as the garment which covereth him and for a girdle wherewith he is girded continually. Let this be the reward of mine adversaries from the Lord and of them that speak evil against my soul. So this is telling you right here that he was just saying that he want he's clothed himself with cussing like as with his garment. So this dude wearing like unrighteousness, like he wearing a T-shirt. That's all it's saying right here. But John the Baptist, when I read this, it makes me think about John the Baptist, how John the Baptist had a leather, he had um, camel skin and a leather girdle. He didn't have no fringes on. Second Kings chapter one, verse eight. Second Kings chapter one, verse eight. And they answered him. He was an hairy man and girt with a girdle of leather about his loins. And he said, it is Elijah, the Tishbite. So this man right here had a girdle of leather about his loins. Second Kings chapter one and verse eight. 
So, Elijah the Tishbite, he didn't wear no um, fringes and garments and stuff. It didn't say that. If you can show me otherwise, then show me. But what I'm seeing, this is what it said he wore. That's how it described him. They call Beelzebub Bow, Bowzebub, in the Old Testament in Second Kings. That's what I was looking at in Second Kings chapter one, verse six. So now we're gonna go into another scripture, and let's go back into the New Testament in Matthew chapter three, verse four, because these dudes really think that these fringes. Is biblical and it, Jesus taught like this, or they have to wear this stuff. Nobody told y'all to wear fringes. We are gonna go into Matthew. Chapter three, verse four. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair so John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins and his meat was locusts and wild honey. So you never heard about people doing these things when before John came. He was preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand for this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the Lord make his path straight and the same John had his raiment of camel's hair so did John keep the law y'all said they was all Jews so they had to keep the law most of y'all think this stuff so the Hebrew Israelites believed that everybody has to wear fringes but I'm showing you Jesus Christ one of his most main disciples john the baptist who was baptizing everybody all john did was tell people to repent and confess he said in those days came john the baptist preaching in the wilderness of judea and saying repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand for this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, or isaiah saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the lord make his path straight I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness of of the whole planet Earth. And the same John had his raiment of cam uh, camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins. And his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan confessing their sins see confessing their sins so they didn't they, the pharisees was wearing all them big jackets and all that stuff when they seen all the john doing all this stuff what they say but when they but when he saw many of the pharisees and sadducees come to his baptism he said unto them "O generation of vipers who hate warned you to flee from the wrath to come Bring forth, therefore, fruits, meat for repentance. See? And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. 
So, Jesus didn't wear no fringes, but we're going to continue. We was in Matthew chapter 3, verse 4. Go to Matthew 22 and 11. And when the king came, and when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. So they had wedding garments and all that stuff, brothers and sisters. And he saith unto him, friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth for many are called, but few are chosen. So. This was a parable of the wedding banquet. So. Jesus was telling a story. This was a parable. So. He let you know. They had wedding garments, but they never teach you in the law in the Old Testament to say what kind of garment to wear during the wedding. They was probably wearing fringes to the wedding. Leave it up to them. They would teach you that. But I'm showing you that they had wedding garments in the New Testament. I'm proving what I'm saying. They ain't proving nothing. They twisting over and telling you it means something that it don't say. That's witchcraft. Go to Matthew 22 and 12. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Now, let's go to Matthew 14 and 36. And besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touch were made perfectly whole. So the hem of his garment don't mean that he had fringes on. The hem of his garment don't mean that he wore uh, um, tassels and all that stuff. It don't mean it was blue and it had three things on the border like they said in Leviticus. So that's Matthew 14 and 36. Let's go to Matthew 9 and 20. Matthew 9 and 20. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. So that's again out of Matthew saying the same thing. Matthew 9 and 21. The hem of his garment. That don't mean he wore fringes. Mark 5 and 27. Mark 5 and 27, Mark 5 and 27, Mark 5 and 27. Mark 5 and 27. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. See, she didn't say if I touch his fringes. She said, touch his clothes. Go read it for yourself. Mark chapter 5. Verse 27, it says, when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And then that's when he said, who touched my clothes and all that. So. I think we, I think we missing stuff. Did we go to Matthew 22 and 12? We went to 14 and 26. Let me see. Oh, 14 and 36. And besought him that they might only touch 
the hem of his garment and as many as touch were made perfectly whole. See. Matthew 14 and 36. So. I did Matthew 14, 36. I, I, let me check Matthew 22 and 12 again. And then we go to Matthew 9 and 20. Yeah. And he said unto him, friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was and he was speechless. So. We read Matthew 22 and 12, and then let's just double check Matthew 9 and 20. It says. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood, 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. Yeah, we got that. Matthew 9 and 20. So go to Hebrews 1 and 11. Hebrews 1 and 11. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 11. They shall perish. But thou remainest, and they shall all, and they and they all shall wax old as doth a garment. It says, "They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doth a garment." See, them garments is old, Old Testament stuff. I mean, not garments, but fringes. Even garments should tell you wax old. It says, and thou, Lord, in the beginning, haste laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest and they all shall wax old as doth a garment. You see, y'all all going to get old and you're going to go back into the dust when you die. You Hopefully you listen to this video and help you make it into heaven because listening to them teachings that they tell you wearing garments and fringes and stuff like that, it's not biblical. And it's, it's they be having guns on outside of their fringes. Go watch the video with the brother um, C. Smooth. Um, he be putting up a lot of videos about Geno Jennings. He showed that video. The brother C. Smooth showed it on his channel where you got them dudes out there, Hebrew Israelites with fringes on, with guns all on their um, waist and stuff in Philadelphia. Yeah, this is facts, brothers and sisters. Ain't making up no lies. So they keep the Sabbath to glorify in their flesh. And I'm speaking facts and showing you the word of God, backing me up and confirming Hebrews 1 and 11. They shall perish, but thou remainest. Whoever does the will of God abide forever, and they all shall wax old as doth a garment. So all them fringes they going to get on is old. Wearing them fringes is Old Testament. And it tells you they shall wax old as doth a garment. Christ never taught people to wear fringes. He never even told people what type of clothes to wear, what to wear on your head. He said, don't do when you're praying and prophesying. Anyway, Hebrews 1 and 11. Now we go on to Ezra, go on to Ezra chapter 9, verse 3. I want to cut them up real good with the sword. Ezra, not Ezra's, Ezra. Not Ezra's, Ezra, E-Z-R-A. Ezra. Ezra, 
chapter 9, verse 3. And when I heard this thing, I rent my garment and my mantle and plucked off the hair of my head and of my beard and sat down a stoned, a stonied. So. Ezra said he rent his garment and his mantle. They was transgressing. And that's where Ezra ripped Ezra was a scribe, I think. So he said he rent his garment and his mantle. So you had garments, you had mantles, you had coats, you had clothes. Why would you think everybody wore fringes if we explaining and showing you all these different things, how people wore and what they dress? How they dress? Let's go into Leviticus 13. Because this is where they get this stuff from. Old Testament, Deuteronomy, Numbers, and Leviticus. So let's go there and beat them in the head with this. Leviticus 13 and 59. This is the law of the plague of leprosy in a garment of woolen or linen, either in a warp or wolf or anything of skins to pronounce it clean or to pronounce it unclean. Y'all not even keeping the law of the plague of leprosy. It tells you. It says, and if it appears still in the garment, either in a warp or in a wolf or in anything of skin, it is a spreading plague. Thou shalt burn that wherein the plague is with fire and the garment either warp or woof or whatsoever thing of skin it be which thou shalt wash if the plague be departed from them then it shall be washed the second time and shall be clean y'all not keeping all these laws the treatment of garments and stuff like that Y'all don't even know how to test and see if somebody got leprosy. So how are you going to say you keeping these laws? You get what I'm saying? You go read the, the treatment of garments in Leviticus chapter 13 and then laws for cleaning lepers in 14. They not teaching all this and doing all this. You never seen them do it, did they? Have y'all ever since anybody been living any since you knew a black person claiming to be a Hebrew Israelite? Have you ever seen any of them cleanse a leper? I never seen it. And I've been researching and studying dudes that have been saying they Hebrew is like since the 1920s had Jewish temples in Harlem and stuff like that. The Jews in Harlem. So I've been watching all this, studying all, all this, but I've never seen them dudes talk about cleansing lepers or keeping that law. So it's like they teach what they want. They look like how they want you to think wh who they are. I'm going by what the Bible say who you are. I don't care what nobody say. <laughs> That's the difference. Also, Leviticus 13 and 52, it say, he shall therefore burn that garment, whether warp or woof, in woolen or in linen, or anything of skin wherein the plague is, for it is a fretting leprosy, it shall be burnt in the fire. See, if y'all say you keeping these laws and all these laws, you'll, you'll admit that you have a priest, and then you'll admit that Jesus Christ is not the high priest. And then you admit you don't believe in Christ. See, it's, it's dangerous when you come up against this word because you get put. If you keep the law, you got to keep all of it. You talking about you wearing fringes. That's in the law, brother. See, y'all all, all got to repent. Y'all all, all need deliverance. If you need somebody to pray for you, come see me and let me put hands on you. I guarantee you I cast out the demons out of all y'all. That's why y'all keep coming for me, because y'all know I cast them demons out of you, but I'm one man. You've never seen Jesus walk up to a whole group of people and just cast out all the demons out of them. It was always personal. But he would preach and people would hear the word and be astonished. Yeah. 
I want to go into Mark chapter 16, verse five. And entering into the script and entering into the sepulchre, tree, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment. And they were frightened. Woo! He had a long white garment. This is speaking about the resurrected Christ. But that wasn't Christ that they seen. And he saith unto them, be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they lay him. So that wasn't Jesus, but it was a man, a, a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment. And they were affrighted. Affrighted. So why do they say he had a long white garment? But the Hebrew Israelites claim that all these people were keeping the law. So they had to wear the fringes and they, this is what they believe. All the Israelites wore fringes because they kept the law. I'm showing you that's not true. So I'm destroying all their lies and their deception that they've been teaching to their wives and their children. And they can't handle this spirit of Christ that God is moving right now and showing and proving his word is true. And every man is a liar if they've been ain't teaching you according to this word. See, we came to destroy all that fringes and stuff today. It's going to be hard for y'all to sleep tonight after this video drop. You better hope this video take more than a little bit, a few hours to process. Because when this drop, it's going to be distress and grievance and shame. What else we have? So that was in Mark chapter 16 and verse 5. This man had a long white garment. If he was still keeping the law of Moses, he would have had blue fringes, not a long white garment. Let's go into Zechariah 13 and 4. And it shall come to pass that when any shall yet prophesy, then his father and his mother that begat him shall say unto him, Thou shalt not live, for thou speakest lies in the name of the Lord. And his father and his mother that begat him shall thrust him through when he prophesieth. And it shall come to pass in that day that the prophets shall be ashamed, every one of his vision, when he hath prophesied. Neither shall they wear a rough garment to deceive. See? Neither shall they wear a rough garment to deceive. And that's what these do. That's what these people do when they prophesy unto you and tell you they wearing fringes, but they never cleanse the leopard. The people who taught them about these fringes never cleanse the leopard. So they just wearing this stuff and not even keeping all the laws. So they just look to appear holy and righteous like they know about these laws and these scriptures. But they get and put to shame with the same word that they claim that they keep. And then they know now we're going to go into... Leviticus 13 and 57. And if it appears still in the garment, either in the warp or in the woof or in anything of the skin, it is a spreading plague. Thou shalt burn that wherein the plague is with fire. So if you admit that you are keeping these laws of the treatment of garments, you admit that you have a priest. If you admit that you have a priest, you admit that Christ died in vain. You are enemy to the cross. See, I'm putting y'all in a bad predicament. Y'all have no choice but to come back after me sideways because I'm doing this righteously and biblically. Let's go into revelations on y'all. Revelation 1 and 13, line upon line, precept upon precept. Revelation 1 and 13 is saying, and in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, we're going to get into that on our next video. We're going to show you about the Manoah, the seven candlesticks. I got a few pictures and I, I got a brother that been helping and sharing some good information. So we're going to go through that on the next video, Lord willing. So Revelation 1 and 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the son of man, cloth with a garment down to the foot and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. So 
this ain't describing um blue fringes and all that it's a with a garment down to the foot they said to the waist they right they fringes stop at their waist this say with a garment down to the foot so he didn't have fringes if his if his garment was to his foot and gird about the paps with a golden girdle see remember john wore a girdle a leather uh, um camel's hair and a um, leather girdle right so what are y'all talking about and his head and his hairs were white like wool as white as snow and his eyes were as a flame of fire and his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters so i gave y'all revelations now we going back go back into mark 2 and 21 Mark chapter 2 and verse 21. It says, No man also sueth, no man also soweth a piece of new cloth on an old garment, else the new piece that is filled it up, or else the new piece that filled it up taketh away from the old. And the rent is made worse. So why would they be walking around with all these white garments and new stuff and putting old fringes on them? You see, you go against my father teachings. You can't prove nothing that we saying is not biblical. Second Samuel 13 and 19. And Tamar put ashes on her head and rent her garment of diverse colors that. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I thought they just said that the fringes got to be blue and all this and all the Israel kept the same laws and all this. Watch this. And she had a garment of diverse colors upon her for with such robes. What robes? I thought they only could wear fringes. For she had a garment of diverse colors upon her. First time we hear about a woman wearing a garment, right? For with such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins appareled. Then his servant brought her out and bolted the door after her. And Tamar put ashes on her head and rent her garment of diverse colors that was on her and laid her hand on her head and went on crying so we see that this was a garment of diverse colors so we seeing that everybody didn't dress the same this woman had a garment of diverse colors these are israelites brothers and sisters so they can't say nothing we went from 2 Samuel chapter 13 and verse 18 that proves there was not it was there was not against the law to have a colorful garment Leviticus 13 and 49 And if the plague be greenish or reddish in the garment or in the skin either in the warp or in the wolf or in anything of skin it is a plague of leprosy and shall be shewed unto the priest so we went back in Leviticus 13 and 49 and then First Kings 11 and 29. First Kings 11 and 29. And it came to pass at that time when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem that the prophet Ahijah the Shilonite found him in the way and had clad himself 
with a new garment and they too were alone in the field and Ahijah caught the new garment that was on him and ran it in 12 pieces but we read that before in first kings 11 and 29. Now Esther 8 and 15. Esther 8 and 15. Esther is one of them chapters that nobody really go out of like that. We working today. Esther 8 and 15. It says. And Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white and with a great crown of gold and with a garment of fine linen and purple in the city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad. So this man ain't just have the white and blue. He had the royal apparel. Blue and white was what they wore. That that was what, what they considered made them royal. But he had purple on it. This a whole different level. Mordecai. See? Y'all claim y'all know all this law and all this stuff, but I'm giving y'all history lessons that y'all didn't not, not teaching this stuff. Why? How can I go through this and show this? It shows that y'all not teaching what y'all should be teaching. So it's not the same as fringes described in Numbers 1538. Let's go back. Numbers 1538. Watch. Numbers 1538, brothers and sisters. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. So it don't even say blue and um, yellow like he said, do it. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that she may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them and that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes after which ye used to go whoring so or Deuteronomy 22 and 12 let's go to Deuteronomy 22 and 12 Deuteronomy 22 and 12 says thou shalt not wear a garment of diverse sorts as of woolen and linen together thou shalt make three fringes upon the four quarters of thy vesture wherewith thou coverest thyself so it tells you three fringes and stuff like that but we didn't see that in Esther with Mordecai he said it said he had he went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white and with the great crown of gold and with the garment of fine linen and purple. And the city Shushan rejoiced and was glad. So Deuteronomy 22 and 5 says, The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment for all that do so for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So you can't sit up here and tell me Mordecai had a woman's garment on, but he didn't have what y'all described what they described. See, they can't teach this stuff like how the way I'm teaching because they are not doing what, what God is leading them to do. Say, Satan is possessing them and. The devil's deceiving him. Also proves sometimes the garment was any color as we read in Esther 8 and 15. Malachi chapter 2 and verse 16. Let's go into Malachi. Malachi verse 2. In 16. For the Lord 
the God of Israel saith that he hateth putting away for one covereth violence with his garment. See, y'all only keep the Sabbath to glorify in your flesh. For one covereth violence with his garment. If it's the Sabbath, why are you cussing on that day? See, for one covereth violence with his garment. Why are you talking about how you angry over slavery and stuff? These people are dead. All your ancestors, them people that fought for land, all that stuff is dead. I got 15% on my phone. We got rock and roll now. I got a lot to get through in a little bit of time, and, and this is going to be hard. Malachi 2 and 16, it proves y'all don't know what y'all talking about. It say, for one covereth violence with his garment. For the Lord, the God of Israel, saith that he hateth putting away. For one covereth violence with his garment, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit that ye deal not treacherously. See, all about the spirit. It wasn't about the flesh, even in Malachi. See, I go into the word of God and give you all spiritual lessons. To, to, to make you strong in the spirit. So hiding behind garment, living in the flesh, covering his sin with his garment. Let's go to Luke chapter 22 and verse 36. Luke chapter 22 and verse 36. You know these? These people doing a crazy stuff right now he could have just drove in front of me but he want to drive behind me you want that much attention buddy that you almost willing to hit my car look this park that i'm in it's it's only a so much little room before you gonna take out and hit this garbage can but he drive right behind me instead of driving in front of me to go do his job i know he's doing his job i'm doing my job too but you ain't gotta do all that buddy That's a sign of evil. So, let me see, Luke 22 and 16. Luke 22 and 16. No, 22 and 36, sorry. Luke 22 and 36. Then said he unto them, but now he that hate the purse, let him take it. And likewise, his script and he that hate no word, let him sell his garment and buy one. So he said he that hate no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. This is what y'all always use to say, man, I got a right to bear arms and stuff. Man, he don't mean it like that. It do say it, but it don't mean to, 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 do, to, to, to go to war with flesh. So it says, and he said unto them, when I sent you without purse and script and shoes, lack ye anything? And they said nothing. Then said he unto them, but now he that hate the purse, let him take it. And likewise his script and he that hate no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. So if you don't have a sword, sell your garment and buy one. If the garments were so important and they had to keep these and it was the law, they, he wouldn't be telling them to sell your garment and buy a sword. This is Jesus Christ himself talking. So you cannot change these words. Don't no man own the Bible. It don't matter how wicked your heart get and how evil you want to hate the truth. You're not going to change these words. They always going to stay the same. You're going to die and go back into the dust. And these words is going to be the same. If you have children, they grow up and see what I'm preaching is the truth. So you can be evil and hate this word all you want. You will die in your sins and go to hell if you don't live what this word is. And you ain't going to make it into heaven. Now look. I get you doing your job, man, but sometimes you're just doing a little too much. This is a little too much. That's a racist stuff. That ain't racist. That's evil and wicked. That's wicked right there. I get you doing your job, but you ain't got to put people's life in danger and try to, oh, like, look, look how close this is, brothers and sisters. 
Is this intelligent? Is this wise? Or is it jealousy? Man, that's that's awfully close for you to just be pulling the car through there. That ain't that much space. You could have just parked right on the side and when it got that. Um, then you put in marks all on the grass and stuff like that. That's wicked. That's evil. You tearing up the property and all that. Trying to do your job, but tearing up stuff, making it worse. You wicked and evil. Come on. You could have parked right here. All this space right here. You could have pulled up right next to the uh to the to the um thing, but you pulled behind me two times. That's wicked and evil. That's wicked. That's wicked. Trying to cause harm. You just caused me harm. Because I'm over here worshiping God and praising God and you're doing wicked stuff. But you're going to be rewarded for your evil deeds. I come here and record every day so they know who I am. What are you trying to send me a sign? What are you trying to say? What y'all trying to say? What y'all trying to do? People are mean. They rude, wicked. Man, you got all this space. Ain't nobody here but me. So there's no reason for you to do that. You pull behind me to go take this garbage out. You could have just pulled right in front. What's the point of all this? What you trying to prove? What you trying to do? Now, when I take a picture of your license plate and I post it up on my Instagram, you're going to feel mad. When I start telling the information on what, where this location is and who you are, you're going to be mad. When I take a picture of that car and post it up on my Instagram, you're going to be mad. Y'all going to be mad. I just command his works to be tested by the Holy Ghost fire. That's all. I'm here every day. There's no reason to do all that and, and distract and try to get a reaction out of someone. That's minding his business, ain't paying you no attention, but you over here putting people, harming people life by almost you. First of all, you damaging the property, damaging the grass. So you disrespecting God because you just you don't care about his creation. You just want to mess up the grass and all that. I feel the same way about y'all people that be cutting down trees and all that. Leave the trees alone, you fools. Anyway, I'm sorry, y'all. This is why I like to record in a place where there's nobody at. So there's no distractions because people do that type of stuff all the time. Now, it's not energy, brother. It's the spirit of God. Don't never say energy or vibration. But I get what you're trying to say. Don't let them change. Don't let them change the spirit. Don't let them change my mood. And well, not my mood, but my spirit. We was in Mark chapter 6 and we went through verse 56. And whether so ever he entered into the villages or cities or country, they laid the sick in the streets and besought him that they might touch, if it were, but the border of his garment. And as many as touched him were made whole. So those who touched Jesus were are made well. So they they touched the border of his garment. It didn't say he had fringes. It didn't say what color it was. It just said they touched the border of his garment. Now let's go into Second Samuel twenty and eight. Second Samuel twenty and eight. Misery love company. I'm not trying to keep you company. Second Samuel chapter 20 and 8, but I will reprove and expose you. I have no fellowship with the works of darkness. I'm not stopping you from doing your job. You could have parked right on the side of me on in either side, but you come right behind me. And then damage the grass. How are you doing your job, but you're doing more damage than cleaning? You just damage the grass. You can't fix that up now. This dude is damaging the property and stuff, and he act like he's doing something good. I don't care how much maintenance you do in that little building over there. When you do evil, you getting rebuked. He say hi to me sometimes. You get what I'm saying? Maybe people be mad because they want you to speak to them. I'm not worrying about you. I'm in my word. 
I'm not in this world right now. You get what I'm saying? People don't understand. When we in our word, we don't even really be wanting to be. Unless you come in here to worship God and hear the word, then that's it. You ain't going to interrupt the preacher while he preaching. So you get what I'm saying? I'm the same as the pastors in the church. It's just that I'm not in that environment. My heart might be more stronger for God sometimes. I, I, I won't say stronger, but I just say I don't have to put on a show to impress nobody. I just got to read the word and rightfully divide it. It's not that much pressure on me. Second Samuel, no matter how many people come and watch and subscribe, it, I would never have had that much pressure to feel obligated to do certain things to, to get keep people and stuff like that. I tell people, you find somebody better preaching than me, then go watch them. I'm not begging nobody to support me or believe in God. Second Samuel verse 20, they come into me. These people be unbelievers and atheists come and try to sit next to me because it's showing that the word of God is powerful and they want to believe all my neighbors. That's why I don't really record videos where my mom stay, where I stay with my mom, because I notice every morning I start coming out. The neighbors want to walk their dog, stand all by my car and they hearing the good news and it's helping them maybe. But then they're, they're going back, could be complaining and saying, yeah, this dude reading the Bible and I, I you know, what I'm saying complaining. So I keep the peace and I just don't make no more videos there no more. Because I don't know what they're doing and how they're planning and plotting. But I know if I'm away from there, whatever happens, it, it, it won't look like I stay here. And these people that stay here are, are, are not having peace or disturbed. You get mad at me at this park. Y'all act however y'all act. It's going to be just shown where I stay. They could try to use that against me and say, well, we don't feel comfortable and we trying to sleep or whatever. And uh, you know what I'm saying? So I just leave to keep the peace. What I'm doing is totally how God loves how us to do things decently and orderly. Even though I'm in my car, but it's 7 a.m. You got people that might say that they work overnight and want to sleep, even though it's this correctional guard that got a, a, a black infinity that live, that stay in where I stay with my mom. He's a correctional officer and he drive a black infinity, a little two door coupe. And every day he leave, he start 7 a.m. He make his he make his engine go like this every day. But louder than that, his car louder than mine. So when he do that, he waking up everybody on the whole street every day. Don't nobody be telling him to calm down and take it easy. And, you know, why you do this every day? Nobody's saying nothing to this man. I told my mom, I said, I complained one day. I went off. I, I got up early, 7 a.m. and started yelling. And my mom like, yo, are you OK? I said, yeah, this man, every day this car do this. I'm going to go say something to him. So one day I went and I was going to say something to him, but I didn't say nothing. I just he got out of his car and I said, what's up to him? Because I, I, I didn't I didn't have it in me to just approach him peacefully. So I didn't say nothing because I knew I would have confronted him in the wrong way. And now that I know he's a cop, now I know why he does that. Maybe he's mad at his wife. Maybe he's mad at his job. But you disturbing everybody in the community. Nobody says nothing or complain about him. He ain't got no cops running around looking at him when he go home at night. But this man come out every morning and do that. And they got it all on camera. They can hear all this stuff and all that. They know it's him. They ain't telling him to calm down and wait till you get down the street to do all that. I don't care if he a cop or not. That man wicked and evil. Little light-skinned Mike Bibby water balloon head ass. Milk dud head ass. Let's continue. I'm getting too worked up. Second Samuel chapter 20, verse 18. He a young guy too, so he like maybe 30 something, or he ain't in his 40s, I don't think. He might be late 30s or early. Like, but you too prideful and proud. Why are you doing this every day? Children be out there catching a the bus. This dude don't got no respect. He just mad at his job. He mad at his life. I don't know what he going through, but he needs some type of therapy counseling. That's the one that need to go to the hospital. Just because you work for the cops, you ain't innocent when you do. If I drive around like that, I have cars speeding up, catching up to me. Like every fast I go, they're going to try to go fast as me. Like it's like some it's like some fake cop 
but riding behind you in an unmarked car, that's how they act like they cops when I drive fast. Like they trying to stop me. But it's all, all is good. It's going to work out for the good of God. Many people witnessed and seen how people team up on the road and try to cause harm to me. So they witnessed it. And so a lot of people think it's a joke. They thought it was a joke so much until God started coming and delivering me. They thought they was going to keep doing this till they hurt me. But God came in and started hurting all them. Second Samuel chapter 20, verse eight. When they were at the great stone, which is in Gibeon, Amasha went before them and Joab's garment that he had put on was girded unto him and upon it a girdle with a sword fastened upon his loins in the sheath thereof and as he went forth it fell out i'm about to stop coming here recording probably i just go to the park that i normally go to i want to be around wicked and evil and this park is small and it's like they looking at me and watching me and hearing me. They come outside and be working outside. I don't want to be around these people. Once I see stuff like that, I know you have hate and and you know what I'm saying? As much time as we said hi to each other, I would think that man had respect for me. But that right there shows a sign of, of hate and jealousy and envy and wickedness. I won't come here and record no more. That's all. This would be my last day for a while. If I had the cash, I would be going to Connecticut out there working and, and maybe sleeping in my car and making videos out there because I'd be so much at peace making better videos. But it's harder for me to study. Well, no, it's not. But all of it come soon and I just get away from this area and stop staying around here so much. I've been around here too long. I'm never really in this area this this long of a period. But right now I'm sacrificing a lot to do good. Now we're going in, in Luke 5 and 36. Luke 5 and 36. It's better to leave. Yeah. I just want to plan it out and think it out and just go to the right place and not have to come back. Last time when I left, I was sleeping in my car for a week trying to get help from all of these public service people and social service wasn't able to really get help like that. So... I came back and started staying with my sister and you know that never really yeah then i went back to my mom so now i'm back in the same place but luke chapter 5 verse 36 says and he spake also a parable unto them no man put it a new put it a piece of a new garment upon an old so we went through that leviticus 19 and 19 Go back in Leviticus 19 and 19. Ye shall keep my statutes. Thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with a diverse kind. Thou shalt not sow thy field with mingled seed. Neither shall a garment mingled of linen and woolen come upon thee. So they had their garments a certain way if you buy your garments from esti they from unbelievers these people garments was from hebrew israelites that's a sin to go to an unbeliever and buy your garment and then be rapping on a song talking about i'm wearing fringes that i got from esti watch this yeah Randy t jackson repost me shalom all praises to the most high yeah it's on Came a long way from meditating on the lawn now All my haters folding like the coat on my arm Anyways, let me not be petty The most high is the captain I'm his boat, he sells me I fight battles when he tell me And he CC every subject The Ruach HaKadosh, yeah, he emailed me So why should I compete, tell me It's just me like I'm taking selfies They ride the wave like they was a jet ski I was down, then his laws helped me That was right before the world shelved me That was right before my wife left me Right before the most high blessed me Back then when the Women tempt me. They said, Let's lie, like they smelling Leslie. I grew my hair, then the demons left me. Numbers 1538. I'm wearing fringes that I got from Etsy. Storing riches up in heaven. Tell them not to bet me. The most high, yeah, he defends me. The most high, yeah, he be.
He said, I'm wearing, he said, I'm wearing fringes that I got from SD. I don't know if y'all heard it, but you can catch it on the playback. SD is not Israelites, my brother. I love y'all. I love you, brother. But I got to speak the truth. SD are not Israelites. You can go look up where that country is from, where that company resides. Y'all ain't going to sit up here and make it look like what y'all doing is biblical. When I'm showing you, you wearing fringes from unbelievers, from heathens. But let me continue. I want to teach. I don't want to make it look like this is me saying this. This is God saying this. Let's go into Daniel chapter seven and verse nine. Told y'all y'all going to be blessed. Y'all going to be blessed if you watch this video. Daniel chapter seven, verse nine. I beheld till the thrones were cast down in the ancient of days did sit whose garment was white. What? Is y'all want to play with me or what, brothers and sisters? Is y'all want to play with me or what? I ain't come to play no games. See, look, go into Daniel chapter seven, verse nine. I ain't come to play no games. It say, I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame in his wills as burning fire. So it said his garment was white as wool. It didn't have no blue and, and um, fringes and stuff like y'all say. See, where was the tassels and all that? I'm showing y'all what the God say in his word. Y'all saying what y'all want to think because your heart divides in wicked imaginations. See, I got to thank the Lord for these revelations, man. This is beautiful. Let's go back into Isaiah 61 and 3. Isaiah 61 and 3. And they be running up on all the celebrities like Kodak Black and Fantasia telling y'all we're going to teach y'all y'all history. They can't even teach why they doing this. And, and what I'm saying, they can't teach y'all nothing about this. They can't touch this. Isaiah 61 and 3. Don't nobody can't prove what I'm saying ain't biblical to a point unto them that Mount and Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil for joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Isaiah 61 and 3. It says the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So the garment no more. It, it, it lets you know the garment won't be physical no more. This is letting you know Isaiah 61 and three. I'm going to give it to you to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes. This is letting you know Isaiah prophesied Jesus would come. So this is, you know, this is New Testament stuff that that we will be, we will have to use now beauty for ashes remember they had sackcloth and ashes it'd be beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning so no more mourning and being sad over the death and the dying and people that are dead he's the god of living not the god of the dead the oil of joy for mourning we better is the day of one's death than the day of one's birth so we joy for mourning and we cry when a child is born i do because I follow God. Y'all don't, a lot of people don't understand God's teachings and they never read it as much to let it stick in their heart and their head. But once you get it, it's going to help you. The oil of joy for mourning. I used to mourn over loved ones that that, that got taken and no longer here. But now I can't, I, I, I will not, I refuse to speak about them. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees of righteousness, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. See, they had the spirit, spirit of heaviness, a hardened heart. Moses was telling them the law. Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord. So it says the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Solomon had the spirit of heaviness. 
that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. They was wearing fringes on and had their own people as servants. And then they was told to let them go. They let them go and brought them back. Come on, brothers and sisters, with fringes on. So we just went into Isaiah 61 and 3. We go into Leviticus chapter 6 and verse 10. And the priest shall put on his linen garment and his linen breeches shall he put upon his flesh and take up the ashes which the fire hath consumed with the burnt offering on the altar. And he shall put them beside the altar. See, remember it just said we're going to have replacing all these ashes and all this stuff. What we just read in Isaiah 60, 1 and 3. So this was dealing with the priest shall put on his linen garment. See? And his linen breeches or breeches shall he put upon his flesh. See? And take up the ashes. This is all in the flesh. And she and he shall put off his garments and put on up. Excuse me, excuse me. So it say, and he shall it say, and he shall put off his garments and put on other garments and carry forth the ashes without the camp unto a clean place. So we see that that's in Leviticus chapter six and verse 11. And I started at verse 10. If Jesus wanted Gentiles to wear fringes or any of his disciples or followers, he would have been commanding or teaching it. Garments with fringes does not make your heart circumcised or get you into heaven. These are traditions of men and not of God. The only reason why people keep these traditions of men is to glory in their flesh, not glorify God. They profane the Sabbath day. Look, what's the difference between you and a sinner wearing a garment? It's, it's your heart and your actions that glorify God, not your apparel. What you think is royal apparel to God is only a piece of dirt if you don't uphold his laws and do his will. So they, they look like they have they profane the Sabbath day and use cuss words and have a heart full of envy. Let's go into Mark chapter seven, verse seven through nine. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things you do. So they hold the tradition of men like wearing fringes and stuff like that. That's not of God. That's not in the commandments. And he said unto them. Full well ye reject the commandment of God. See, that's not in the commandment that ye that ye may keep your own tradition. See, you reject the commandments of God so you could keep your own tradition. Wearing fringes is not a commandment, brothers and sisters. Let's go into Colossians chapter two, verse eight. Colossians chapter two, verse eight. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. See, they are spoiling you through philosophy and vain deceit. God said that stuff is deceitful and it's vain because it's after the tradition of men. They... Jesus didn't teach that stuff. That's rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Christ didn't come teaching that stuff. He didn't wear fringes. You ain't hear them say, yeah, his tassels was looking like this and his color was blue. And it say this one man was sitting with long white raiment. So how y'all going to try to make it look like all the Israelites kept this? 
A lot of these people were Israelites that we was reading about in the New Testament. It tells us when they mention the Gentiles. So if it really don't mention Gentiles, then they talking about people that knew law and knew Israelite. Unless you they mention a specific place where they was at. But that man that was sitting on the cloth on the, on Jesus temple, he was told to go do that. He knew to tell them, he knew to tell them that he rose and go where to go look for him at. So once you know the scriptures, you'll know why things are the way they are and they was written the way they was written. Mark chapter 15 verse, I, I'll end with that because I got to go from verse 3 all the way up to verse 20. I'll start at 1 Timothy 1 and 4 and we'll, we'll end with that one. First Timothy one and four. Hold up. First Timothy chapter one and verse four. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith. So do. And then Matthew chapter 15, verse 3 through 20 says. But he answered and said unto them, why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? So. For God commanded, saying, honor thy father and mother, and he that cursed his father or mother, let him die to death. But ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. That's what they said. That's what the Pharisees in them said. They was wearing fringes saying all this stuff and honor not his father or his mother. He shall be free. Thus, have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition? Ye hypocrites. Well, did Esaias or Isaiah prophesy of you saying this people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain, they do worship me, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. And he called the multitude and said unto them, hear and understand not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which come out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Then came his disciples and said unto him, knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? But he answered and said, every plant which my heavenly father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Then answered Peter and said unto them, unto him. Then answered Peter and said unto him, declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, are ye also yet without understanding? Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drought? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan come out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshiped him. Then came she and worshiped him. So she worshiped Jesus Christ. I thought worship was only supposed to belong to God. Then came she and worshiped him. Then came she and worshiped him saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the from their master's table. Then 
Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. And Jesus departed from thence and came nigh unto the sea of Galilee and went up into a mountain and sat down there. And great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, and dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. So y'all not healing no blind person. No, y'all, y'all, God is not using y'all to help with his power heal the blind, the dumb, and the main. How can you heal the blind if you can't even see yourself? How can you heal the blind if you tell people you wearing fringes that you got from Esty? Esty is some Chinese company or something like that, brothers and sisters. They sell everything to anybody. That's like an Israelite saying, yeah, we take tithes from the heathens and other nations. They only was allowed to take tithes from other Israelites. You get what I'm saying? So if we going to live what's in the Bible, we got to live it word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept. If not, just say you saved by grace and you ain't keeping the law. Stop telling people we got to keep these commandments and stuff like that. And you ain't even keeping them. I just proved it. It don't matter how people feel and what they want to say. I'm showing you the facts. They had many different color type of raiments, many different color type of garments and linen and, and, and um, white robes and stuff. They had coats. They had clothes. So you can't just sit up here and say everybody had garments on and I just showed you something different. See, all it takes is for you to say something that grieved the Holy Spirit and it's going to make me do a whole teaching. I'm not going to tell y'all where this teaching came from, but sometimes you can have conversations with people and they would say certain things that you disagree with. And that's where the teachings have come from. I'm not going to get into details and say specifically how it came, where it came. I'll just let you know straight up. I don't have no non-disclosure, non-agreement, non-disclosure agreement with nobody. So it's nothing that I won't talk about. It's just that if I have a conversation with someone in private, I won't go back in public and talk about it. Unless they trying to call me something out my name and make me look like I'm something I'm not. Then I'm coming out publicly. Now you got to prove what you're saying because you publicly slandering me. What matter of fact, you start saying words and talking stuff in private, I'm bringing it public because I'm not going to let you use anything against me and make it look like I wasn't doing the will of my father. I'm not here to lead you to follow me i'm here to lead you to christ so that's what i do tanya moore says joel 2 and 31 let me see what we got up in joel 2 and 31 let's see where joel is at Joel 2 and 31 says, The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. So before the Lord come, the sun is going to be black. We ain't, ain't nobody going to be able to see. It ain't going to be no power. Ain't going to be no electricity. You ain't going to know about nothing about no vibes or nothing like that. It's going to be complete darkness. That's what's going to happen. All your technology will turn against you. That's why everybody getting their stuff hacked now, because this is just the beginning. To, so y'all can be prepared and be ready 
when Jesus Christ come back, everybody's getting a taste of their own medicine that they dished out. You like to be an oppressor. You like to gang stalk people. Now you're getting your stuff hacked. Now all your information, what you did in secret will be revealed. It's nothing that you do in secret that won't be revealed. This is why I don't hide what I'm doing. I'm open in case anything y'all think gonna get revealed. I ain't doing no secrets. I ain't got no secrets. Y'all tell me I'm homeless. I tell you, no, nah, I'm not homeless. I just don't have a place where that's my home. So technically I stay with my mom, but I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a place. So I am homeless, but I have a place to stay. I tell the truth. I don't hide nothing. Can't nothing come back against me because I'm being honest. Before I started walking with Christ, I don't care about none of that stuff. Once I started walking with Christ, I started to move like a man and move Christ like. And I never let the devil deceive me or condemn me. And he he ain't as powerful as God. Myra says, so glad I came back. Bless you, brother, for not. Letting the world stop you. God is with you, sir. Your message made absolute sense. Back with scriptures. And I'm so glad you are doing church right. Amen. All glory be to God. Thank you for coming in, Myra. But in vain, they do worship me. Yeah. It's a physical and spiritual garment. Avo Israel. I get what you're saying. That's why the Jesus Christ, when he came, he brought us more into that physical garment. The Old Testament is dealing more so with the physical garment. That's why they had ways how to wear it and stuff like that. But in the New Testament, it say stuff like even hating the garment spotted by the flesh and stuff like that. You get what I'm saying? Isaiah 53. So Isaiah 53, verse 1 through 12. Isaiah 53, verse 1 through 12. It says... Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should de desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid. As it were our faces from him, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shares is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people was he stricken and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet 
It pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear their inequities. See, so when God justify you and bear your iniquities, it's nothing that the devil can do. Jesus Christ died for all our sins. So if you're going to condemn somebody, if you are trying to condemn somebody without teaching them, leading them to what's the truth or praying for them and still lead them to the truth. That's not righteous judgment. You leave room to be condemned back. See, it's righteous judgment when you throw the scriptures and you condemn somebody or you rebuke somebody. A wise man to take it, a fool will puff up at it. Then you'll have people just come out and judge with no scriptures. I couldn't come at P. Diddy like the world come at him and try to say he's guilty before proving he didn't even get a court date yet. So these people are trying to take him to court. He can settle out and do another lawsuit. And it's like, I won't go there and in case I talk to witnesses myself and, and interview them and they testify, I won't go start making all these allegations and assumptions. But what I will do is say, hey, what I see is your son making music with Kodak. He called himself Sniper Gang. Y'all ain't talking about sniping people with Bible verses. Y'all carrying guns in y'all videos. Kodak friend, 22 G's from New York City. He talk about drilling and they, they was in the war. Them young brothers was in wars. They know everybody know exactly what I'm talking about. It's not fake. So. I'm trying to reach them brothers and show them like Christ is the way, you know, when y'all did them videos, that wasn't Christ like. So maybe y'all can change the way y'all rap. Y'all can pick up the Bible. They said Hebrew Israelites was teaching Kodak Black. At one time, I think he even confessed that he was learning more about his Hebrew Israelite um, stuff and history and stuff. But you never heard that brother talk about how he gonna put away his sins and how he gonna start rapping biblically that's my thing like Kodak Black supposed to be in a leader position to be giving the bible verses to them people in Haiti right now because I believe that he's Haitian or something so them people in Florida and Haiti he can be helping by bringing peace and bringing bible scriptures but if they got these young brothers getting millions of dollars for talking about sniping people then that's what's being promoted. That's how the devil makes people worship him and give them everything in the world. So when I, re I come with love, when I rebuke somebody, I give them the scriptures and say, hey, y'all rapping about drilling and guns, but God said that don't render evil for evil. God said, if you hate your brother without a cause, you would murder at heart. He said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. He said, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. So once you know these things and if you believe in God, you have to fight for that change and y'all will reach more people because there's more darkness involved with these young dudes that's in that mind frame like they're young they got weapons and if somebody argue with them or do something wrong to them they ready to go prove something so the one that is around that environment or that is that age group and think like that once they get this word of god they can go back and help others
but it's not my job to try to preach to people and help people. I'm only going to remind you of Christ and glorify his name. My phone on 5%, y'all. Somebody from um, France up in here, may peace be unto you. I don't know if y'all can translate that from this brother in France. All right, so I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna end this video so y'all can get the playback, and I'll come back hopefully, Lord willing, later, and I cover this other video. So I'll see y'all like in a few hours, Lord willing. The Word is God, and the Holy Ghost was in Him, which is also God. But Jesus prayed. To the Father, which is God. Yep. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he hath given us of his spirit. When Jesus died on the cross, he said, I'm going to leave you the comforter. He said, leave us the spirit, his Holy Ghost, his Holy Spirit. Very similar with us he and us is referring to the holy ghost right so you know peter and paul and the apostles had the holy ghost but when they came in to arrest jesus they made a mistake just because you have the holy ghost it don't mean that you might have make a mistake because We are humans, especially when it comes to the scriptures. Nobody knows everything. If a man think he know everything, he know nothing. He is puffed up. So I'm going to leave this right here, y'all. Get some gas. And start today off. Make sure uh, y'all put God first in everything. Stay strong in the Lord. Keep the faith. Fight the good fight. And I want to thank everybody for viewing the stream, joining the stream. If you like the video, you can hit the like. If you're interested in supporting this channel, I have t-shirts for sale if you want to email me. I got Jesus Christ t-shirts, but they're more expensive. They're like 40 bucks, I think. But the t-shirts I'm selling, I'll do for like 25, 30 or something like that. So if you email me, I haven't sold any yet. So depending on who, how fast they come, the prices might be varying. The first come might get the best prices. But if you want to support me, you can email me and we can talk more about that. But other than that, y'all, I am gone. See y'all later. Enjoy. May peace be unto y'all. In Jesus' name.